thank you very much for uh, inviting me to this beautiful conference and to make sure it happens despite the conditions. Um, yeah, so, well, I want to tell you about uh, some uh, surprising, at least uh, in my opinion, um, interaction between a uh, low dimensional topology and the, and the theory of motifs. Um, as a disclaimer, I, I have to say that I'm not I'm by no means an expert in, in motifs. So it could be that I, um, maybe that I uh, forget to name uh, some people or misattribute some results. Uh, if this happens, uh, don't hesitate to intervene and correct me. Um, all right, so, well, uh, let me start by defining the first word in my title, not. Um, so here's the definition. I fix a linear embedding uh, of R into R3. Um, and uh, I'm gonna study a space of long knots. So it's denoted like this. I'm embedding uh, uh, sub C from R into R3. So that the space of embeddings uh, from R to R3 that coincide with uh, my fixed linear embedding J outside of a compact subset of R. Um, and you equip this with the uh, compact open topology. Uh, so you, um, well, the topology is not very relevant. Whatever topology has is such that pi zero is really the set of knots that we know. Um, and more generally, we can do this. Well, there is no reason to restrict to to uh, R three as target. You can do it. Uh, you can do the same construction with target R D. Uh, for any uh, D that is at least uh, three. Um, the only difference is that for what's special about R3 is that the space has many uh, interesting connected components. But the, the field of like not theory is about studying the set of components of that space. Uh, when D is at least four, uh, it's a connected space, but it's still, uh, it still has higher homotopy groups. So it, it can be interesting as a space. Um, okay, so here's a picture of a typical element in uh, the space of long knots in R3. Um, and okay, so let me state the main theorem uh, in a slightly imprecise form, and I'll I'll give a more uh, a more precise version as soon as uh, I define the uh, as soon as I make more definitions. Um, so the theorem is that for D, uh, yeah, for D uh, at least four, the space of embeddings of R into R D uh, has a motivic structure. And uh, in the case of knots, the space of embeddings of R into R three, it's not quite uh, that space that will have a motivic structure. It's it's what I, I denote T infinity of that space, and I will define this uh, in the talk. So at, at the moment, you can just view this as an approximation uh, to the space of knots. And in both cases, uh, the motives are over Q. Uh, and so what do I mean by a motivic structure? Um, so I said that a space has a motivic structure. There is uh, a motivic homotopy type whose Betty realization is X. And uh, I'm gonna define what I mean by motivic homotopy type. Maybe naively you could Imagine that a motivic homotopy type uh, would be an object in the um, uh, in the unstable uh, motivic homotopy category. Uh, it's not quite what I mean. So let, let me uh, let me uh, let me define this now. So uh, I'm going to fix uh, once and for all a number field k uh, and an embedding of k into the complex numbers. Uh, and Jeffrey, sorry, yes. sorry, we have a question. Uh, C Betty realization, or oh, he, just, he just answered it. Sorry, he just answered. Oh, it. Sorry, sorry, excuse me. Okay, good. Um, right, so once I've fixed that embedding, I have a Betty realization. So, the most basic version of this is uh, uh, yeah, when I have an algebraic variety over uh, smooth, uh, so smooth algebraic variety over K. Uh, I can uh, basically change it to a complex number along that embedding. And then I have a complex algebraic variety and that has an, under an underlying homotopy type. 
And then from this construction, I can uh, also have a beta utilization for uh, any uh, category of motifs over K. Uh, uh, and I'm going to denote uh, this beta utilization functor, whatever the source is, uh, I'm going to denote it by B. Uh, and it's always going to be uh, relative. So always there will be uh, an embedding sigma that is uh, fixed. Um, okay, so I'm going to denote by D A K comma lambda, uh, the infinity cate category of motives over K with coefficient in the commutative ring lambda. Uh, so I think it's standard notation. Uh, so D A uh, is for like transfers uh, and I, I use the et al topology. Uh, I think if I use the et al topology, it doesn't matter if I have transfers or not. Um, uh, okay, and now I can define what I mean by a simply connected. So I'm going to define first what a simply connected motivic homotopy type is. Uh, and then, well, th there is a slightly more involved ver version for uh, if you want to remove the word simply connected. Um, so a simply connected motivic homotopy type over K is a data of uh, a commutative algebra in the in, uh, in my category of, of motives with coefficients in Q. Uh, and I require that this commutative algebra, uh, it's better realization, so it's going to be a commutative algebra now in the, in the derived category of Q, so it's a, like a, what people call a, a CDGA, commutative differential graded algebra. Uh, I require that that better realization is simply connected, so it doesn't have cohomology in degree uh, zero and one. Well, in degree zero, you just have a unit and nothing in degree one. And of finite type, so finite dimensional, uh, the cohomology is finite dimensional in degree. Um, yeah, so that, 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 that's, you should think of this as the rational part of the homotopy type. Then for each prime P, uh, I give myself a simply connected uh, P complete space, X sub P. Uh, again, of uh, finite type, so finite dimensional cohomology. Oops, I think we lost connection. Karim, uh, do you hear us? Hello, yes, I hear you. Ah, okay. It's not it's not an issue with the IHS Zoom room. No, 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 no. Jeffrey, uh, do you hear us? But uh, uh, Jeffrey use a Linux computer with the wireless network, I think. Uh, okay, yeah, you are back. Hi. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Let's continue. Um, it's all right. Okay, sorry. You can still see my uh, screen. Uh, I see your pic. Uh, I see your pic. Uh, okay. I see me. you, but uh, don't see uh, your file. Share my screen. Your, your Beamer file. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Sorry it. about that. It's uh, all right. It's good. Yes. Yes. Uh, one second. Okay, so I was giving the definition of a simply connected motivic commutative type. So there is a rational part, which is a commutative algebra in the in the category uh, in the category of motives with Q coefficients. For each prime p, I have a, a p complete space x p, which is simply connected finite type and has an action uh, of the absolute zero group of my field. Uh, and finally, I have a compatibility data. Uh, between the, these two things. So for each prime P, I have um, an equivalence of commutative algebra uh, between the, the commutative algebra of quotients over XP uh, with coefficients in QP and the commutative, the betualization of the algebra A tensor QP. Uh, so maybe a few words of explanations uh, here. Um, so the left-hand side maybe is not quite a commutative algebra, but merely uh, an infinity algebra, but that's not, uh, 
that's not very uh, that's not very problematic here. You can either strictify it to a strictly commutative algebra, or uh, since we're doing uh, we're working in infinity categorical language, it's not there is no difference between these two notions. Um, the the right hand side. Um, uh, yeah, the left hand side uh, has a, an action of gamma k just because uh, it's a pointer, and xp by, by assumption has an action of gamma k. The right hand side uh, has an action of gamma k, and that's because um, the because the isomorphism between beta realization and eta realization. So instead of instead of working with beta realization, you could uh, work with eta realization, and you, you get something which is equivalent and has. Uh, has an action of the absolute variable because of field. Jofra, we have yes. received a question to you. Uh, what is a commutative algebra R in DAKQ? A commutative monoid object? Yes. But uh, yeah, maybe I, I should emphasize that uh, uh, this notation DAKQ uh, maybe usually is used for the, the triangulated category of motifs. Here I'm really working at the infinity categorical level. So a commutative algebra is more data than just a commutative algebra in the, in the triangulated category. Um, okay. So that's, that's a definition of uh, a simply connected motivic commutative type. Um, So the way you define it formally is by the, the following pullback diagram. So, uh, well, you have this category of commutative algebras in uh, DAKQ. Uh, it takes the opposite category because uh, it's going to be uh, the cohomology of my homotopy type. Uh, here I have the, um, the product of all primes of the category of p-complete spaces with a gamma k action. Um, and uh, at the bottom right corner, I have this product uh, of these of uh, the category of commutative algebras uh, in the derived category of QP uh, with uh, an action of gamma k. And again, I take uh, the opposite category here. So again, where by D of QP, I don't quite mean the I don't mean the triangulated category, but really the the infinity category of chain complexes with QP coefficients. Um, so uh, well, this functor here is taking uh, taking code chains uh, on each factor uh, with QP coefficients, um, and this functor here um, is uh, well uh, given a given a, a, a motive over K. I have uh, its eta realization, which will be um, uh, a chain complex. Uh, over QP with a, an action of gamma K. Uh, and then this functor is symmetric monoidal, so it works in commutative algebra to commutative algebra. And I can do this for each P, and this gives me a map like this. So I take this pullback, and maybe I should add some words everywhere. So here, it's not, it's like a full subcategory of that where I restrict to spaces which are uh, simply connected and finite type, and similarly here and here. Uh, but that's that's how you formally define this this category. Um, okay, there is a question I see. Uh, let me read. No, I don't see any questions to you at the moment. But I see Marco Balo has raised his hand. His hand. Well, uh, yeah. I'll raise a question if I see it. Okay. What what is the question? Sorry. Uh, Q and A. Okay. Geoffrey, uh, questions in Q and A. Okay. Good. Um, uh, where was I? Okay, so I have this uh, pullback square, and I, ca I can compare it to another pullback square. Um, uh, which uh, de actually defines uh, the category of simply connected homotopy type. Uh, and this second pullback square is uh, essentially due to Sullivan. So how can you construct a homotopy type? Well, you have a rational part. Uh, so again, by homotopy type, I mean simply connected and finite type. 
So well, Sullivan has showed has showed that um, uh, a rational homotopy type is the same data as a commutative algebra in, in chain complexes over Q. Uh, so that's that's uh, this uh, upper right corner. Then I have for H prime P a P complete part. So I have a, a space with a, a P complete space for H prime P. And I have a compatibility data, which is, uh, well, I, re I require that uh, when I uh, extend scalars from Q to QP, uh, the commutative algebra I get is uh, identified with uh, co-chains over the, the component uh, indexed by P uh, with uh, QP coefficients. So, so this map is taking uh, co-chains with QP coefficients. Um, so, so yeah, so that's uh, what uh, Sullivan called the, the arithmetic square. You can reconstruct a homotopy type from a rational data, a p-complete data for each prime, and a, a compatibility between uh, between these two things. Um, and actually, you, you can compare these two pullback squares. So there is a, the bottom pullback square is sort of, there is a, forgetful map from the top pullback square to the bottom pullback square. So, well, to a, to a space with a gamma key action, you can forget the gamma key action and it gives you a space. Um, for uh, a uh, we yes. have received a question to you. Uh, not closure of QP? Uh, algebraic closure, you mean? Yeah. No, it's, it's really QP. This, okay. is, this is a coefficient, not the, not the base. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, sorry, yeah. So I have a forgetful map from this category, uh, this product to this product. I have a Betty realization map from this uh, category of commutative algebra to commutative algebras in uh, the derived category of Q. Uh, and well, these two, I also have a, a functor from here to here that forgets the gamma key action. So in fact, uh, the first pullback diagram maps to the second pullback diagram. Um, and uh, well, the, the map I have, the, the induced map on the upper right, uh, upper left corner, sorry, uh, I call the Betty realization of a motivic homotopy type. So motivic homotopy type has a realization that is a homotopy type. So again, remember everything is simply connected. Um, okay. So how do we construct motivic homotopy type? Well, in particular, uh, smooth algebraic varieties over, over, uh, over K uh, will give me motivic homotopy types. So this, uh, this uh, superscript SC means uh, simply connected. So what I mean by that is um, algebraic varieties whose Betty realization is simply connected. Uh, so how do I construct this functor? Well, since this uh, this category of motivic homotopy types is is a pullback, I just have to map to each of the three corners. Uh, so the rational part, well, to an algebraic variety over K, uh, I can take its motive, which is an object in the in the in the category of motives D A K Q, and I, I can take a dual, the linear dual of that. Um, and that thing will be uh, a commutative algebra in the, in the category of motifs. So uh, the diagonal of X induces uh, a commutative algebra on this, uh, on this object. Uh, the P-complete part is given by, uh, by the etal homotopy type. So given a, given a smooth uh, algebraic variety over K, I can construct its, its etal, the etal homotopy type of, this, of its base change uh, to, to K bar. Um, uh, and then I, I p-complete that thing, uh, and what I get is a is, an, is a p-complete space with a with an action at the, the absolute Garabou positive field. Uh, yeah, and I didn't write it, but these two these two pieces of data are compatible. So what I defined here is really uh, a functor to motivic homotopy types. Shofra, uh, we have a question. What goes wrong if you allow non-simply connected spaces? Um, yeah, essentially the definition is, is the same for simply uh, non-simply connected. I'm going to say a word in a minute, but uh, um, yeah, the only difference is you have to be a bit more careful about what, what you mean by uh, by a p-complete space, maybe. Uh, 
but uh, I'm going to give an example in a second too. Um, okay, so what can we what can we say about uh, about uh, multi-locomotive types? Well, we have this uh, theorem which says that the 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 cohomology groups of uh, multi-locomotive types the the cohomology groups of a multi-locomotive type are naturally uh, nori motifs. And this structure is compatible with all the natural operations that you have in cohomology group, for example, cup products, but also uh, steam rod operations, maybe. And you have a kind of uh, uh, ekman hilton dual of this theorem about the homotopy groups. So the homotopy groups of a pointed motivicomotopy type, so motivicomotopy type with the, the data of a, of a base point, um, can be given the structure of a nori motif. Uh, yeah, maybe when I say cohomology group, oh, I did it in the first theorem, but not in the second. So what I mean by the homotopy groups is really the homotopy group of, uh, of the Betty realization. And uh, and this structure that you have in homotopy groups is compatible with all the natural operations, uh, for, for example, white type products. Um, so maybe I'll explain a little bit uh, how you can, uh, yeah, I'll try to explain how you can prove these theorems. Uh, it's not really hard once you have the right definition of nori motifs. Um, so I want to say a few words about that. Um, so uh, essentially this follows uh, work of Ayub Iwanari. I misspelled that. Uh, the first A and N are, uh, should be swapped. Uh, Shuduri and Galawar. Um, so how did it work? So you, uh, we, we have the, the Betty realization from the, the category of motifs with Z coefficients to the derived category of Z. So again, everything is, is uh, infinity categorical. So that's the left adjoint. Uh, and the right adjoint B lower star of this functor preserves filtered coordinates. And uh, yeah, moreover, uh, this adjunction is Z linear, so both Infinity categories are naturally enriched uh, over uh, over the derived category of Z. Um, both the left and the right adjunct are compatible with the structure. So, so from these two uh, observations, uh, we said the, so we have a as for any adjunction, we have a co-monad. Uh, on so in, in that case, we have a co-monad on D Z, and because of the fact that the right adjunct preserve filtered coordinates. Um, uh, so it, it since uh, it, it also preserves, uh, of course, uh, homotopy limits because uh, this is a, it's a stable infinity category. So, so in fact, this uh, this common ad preserves all colimits, um, and also since it's Z linear, uh, I mean you can you can. Uh, it's it's not very hard to prove that any Z linear. Uh, uh, Colimit preserving functor from DZ to itself is of the form uh, C maps to C tensor with something. And in that case, uh, since uh, our functor is, is, is a co-monad, uh, this HA guy is, uh, is in fact a co-algebra in DZ. So this HA is just uh, what you get when you apply the co-monad to Z. So you start, uh, you start with Z here. Uh, so the com channel complex Z concentrated in degree zero, apply B star and apply B. And, and you get some co-algebra. Um, uh, but there is a little bit more uh, structure than that. Uh, the point is that B is a, is a symmetric monoidal functor, and by abstract nonsense, B star is lax monoidal. So, so this means that our co-monad is actually lax monoidal, uh, and this implies that H upper A is in fact a commutative uh, half algebra. So uh, Z is, is a unit of DZ. So when I apply B star, I get some commutative algebra in, in motifs. Uh, uh, and then when I beta realize, I get some commutative algebra in DZ. So this H upper A is uh, what people call uh, I use motivic Galois group. Um, and sort of by, by abstract nonsense, uh, we have a factorization of the beta realization. Uh, through the category of co-modules over this uh, commutative algebra. 
So I, I rewrote this here. Uh, so maybe I, I call the first functor uh, B tilde. So it's, a, it's an enhancement of, uh, of materialization. And the second functor U is just the forgetful functor U. You forget the uh, commutable structure. Um, so an observation that you can make is, so if the functor B was conservative, uh, the materialization, uh, the first functor would be an equivalence. This, this is the content of the, the nevicity theorem. So the, the conservativity is the only thing that is missing. The rest of the uh, hypothesis of the nevicity theorem are, are satisfied. Um, so it would be cool that we would express uh, motifs as uh, co-modules over uh, some alpha algebra. Unfortunately, the functor B is not conservative, so that's uh, something I learned from a, a paper by Ayub. Um, but the, the lack of conservativity, uh, like to contract, uh, to show it's conservative, you, you actually have to use uh, motifs that are very, that are not geometric. So there is a conjecture that is still open that uh, called the conservative conservativity conjecture that the functor B is conservative when restricted to geometric motifs. So motifs that, are, that come from uh, algebraic varieties. Uh, so if this conjecture is true, it would mean that the category of geometric motifs uh, embeds fully faithfully in co-modules over HA. Uh, maybe a remark, uh, the conservative con conjecture is a, it's a purely rational question. Uh, if it's true, uh, it's true with z coefficients, if only if it's true with q coefficients. And the point is, um, with yeah, in order to show this, uh, to go from q to z, uh, the problem just come might just come from torsion, and and you have a, a theorem called Suslin rigidity that tells you that um, with torsion coefficients, this category d a, uh, it's just. Um, uh, yeah, it's essentially uh, uh, an element of DAK with torsion coefficient is uh, a chain complex with an action of the absolute Gerhard group of, the, of, the, of K. So the, the beta realization will be, will be conservative. Um, okay. So what can you do with this half algebra H A? So uh, recall it's a half algebra in uh, chain complexes over, over Q essentially, uh, sorry, over Z. So it's uh, a priori it has a uh, cohomology. Uh, uh, it could have cohomology in lots of different degrees. So if, if it was concentrated in degree zero, then the category of co-modules um, would be the derived category of the Abelian category of co-modules over the, well, I denote it pi zero of HA, or you could also write H zero. Uh, uh, so it would be, that would be great. Uh, and conjecturally, this is a case. So it's, uh, that's related to the, the, the conjecture of the existence of a T structure in the category of motives. Um, uh, so in, we know, uh, so of one half of this conjecture, we know that the, the Hopf algebra H shade doesn't have homology in negative degrees. Uh, so that's a theorem of Ayub. And in fact, Ayub has an explicit uh, uh, chain complex uh, that uh, represents uh, this half algebra H A. Uh, and you would think uh, by staring at it, you'd be able to decide if it has cohomology in positive degrees or not, but uh, it's not so easy. Um, but in any case, uh, what's known, uh, it's a theorem of Shudri and Galauer. Um, the, if you take pi zero of HA or H zero, the, the zeros uh, homology group of that uh, thing, uh, you find a motivic Galois group of the category of Nori motifs. So that, if you don't know what a Nori motif is, you can take this as a definition. Uh, so a category of Nori motifs is a category of uh, co-modules over this. Uh, so, so now it's a half algebra over like a, it's a discrete half algebra. It's really in the category of abelian groups. It's actually a flat over over uh, over Z. Um, 
So, so yeah, if, if you want, it's, a, it's an, affine, uh, an affine group scheme over Z and you, you look at uh, representations of that. Uh, so unconditionally, uh, we actually have factored uh, her beta realization uh, through first the category of co-modules over HA. So HA is something which is potentially derived. Um, and, and then, uh, well, since HA maps to pi zero of HA, because HA is, uh, is connected, it doesn't have homogeneity in, in negative degree, you have a sort of a forgetful map to, um, if you have a co-module over HA, it has an underlying co-module over HN, uh, namely an object in the derived category of uh, neural motifs. And then you have the forgetful functor U2 uh, to the derived category of Z. So, so that's unconditional. Uh, and the conservativity conjecture would say that the B tilde is, is a, uh, maybe not quite an equivalence, but when you restrict to geometric motifs, uh, it would be fully faithful. And the T structure conjecture would be uh, saying that U1 is an equivalence. Um, so if these two conjecture are true, you've written the category of motifs as the derived category of some abelian category. Um, okay, so now I can give the proof of the uh, of the theorem I mentioned earlier, but uh, homotopy groups of motivic homotopy type. So from the from the construction of neural motifs, you can you can realize that a neural motif is data of uh, a rational part, which is um, uh, so it's a Q vector space with a coaction of this Hopf algebra over over Q. And for each prime p, I give myself a finitely generated ZP module, uh, M sub t, with a continuous section of the uh, absolute Gauss group as a field, and some compatibility between the two uh, the two structures. So I have an isomorphism between uh, when I extend scalars to Q p. Uh, sorry, I wrote a should be m. So that thing. Uh, uh, so the left hand side has a gamma k action and the right hand side uh, it also has a gamma k action because uh, uh, well you can show that there is uh, any uh, any no remotive over, over q has uh, an underlying uh, yeah when you when you extend scalars to qp you have a, you have a gamma k action so so once you know this uh, the proof of the theorem is, is easy um, so yeah, recall the, the theorem is I want to show that the homotopy groups of a pointed motivic homotopy type are no motives. So let's take uh, so recall a pointed mot uh, motivic homotopy type is like I have this which is the commutative algebra in in motives with Q coefficients, and I have this xp for p p complete spaces with gamma k actions. So on the one hand, on the rational part, so I can apply this functor uh, u1b. So this is from the previous slide remember so u1 b so it's this functor that goes from uh, motifs to the derived category of neural motifs um, so that gives me a commutative algebra in, in the derived category of neural motifs and by abstract um, yeah by abstract uh, reasoning uh, I mean by it's a very standard argument that uh, so if you look at how Sullivan constructs a rational homotopy type from a commutative algebra, uh, so that's what I denote by this, uh, by these brackets here. So yeah, this notation is the, the rational homotopy type associated to this commutative algebra in, in, uh, in the derived category of Q. Uh, uh, the point is that the homotopy groups of that will have uh, the structure of neural motives with Q coefficients. Is that is that the same? Sorry, is that the same as the primitive homology of the gadget um, algebra? Uh, yes. Yeah. If you you can also yeah. Thank. You. Uh, uh, right. And also, well, for H prime p, uh, well, that's uh, straightforward. The homotopy groups of X p uh, will have an action of gamma k, and uh, well, you have a compatibility. Uh, you have a compatibility between the two pieces of data. Okay, so what happens is in the non-simply connected case, uh, I'm not gonna do the general theory, but uh, let me give an example. Um, 
And I think, well, this uh, this goes back to the work of uh, Deline and Koncharov. So we'd like to say, uh, if you have an algebraic variety over K, we'd like to say something like the, the fundamental group is a motif. But of course, it doesn't make a lot of sense because the fundamental group is is in general is in general not a boolean. Um, so how can you make sense of that? Um, well, how do you uh, approximate a group by a boolean uh, groups? You have something called the lower central series. So we call uh, the lower central series of a group. I have uh, it's defined inductively gamma zero of g is the group g itself, and then gamma uh, I define gamma sub i plus one of g to be the things uh, that can be written as a commutator of an element in G and an element in gamma, gamma I of G. Um, so it's a sequence of smaller and smaller uh, normal subgroups of G. Um, and I can consider the quotients and they, they organize themselves uh, in, 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 into a tower uh, indexed by the integers. Um, so I can view this tower as a, as a pro object in the category of groups. Um, so that's what I call the nilpotent completion of my group. Um, and the theorem you can prove, so an example, which is a motivating example for what I'm going to talk about, uh, the example of the purebred group. So purebred group, uh, if you consider the Hopf algebra of continuous map from P and nil into Z. So when I'm continuous in the sense that, yeah, pro group has a, has a, has a topology, so you, you, you give it the, the inverse limit topology, where you give each, uh, each term in the tower that discrete topology. So I can look at continuous uh, functions from that group into Z. That's a Hopf algebra over Z. Uh, and the point is that this Hopf algebra uh, can be given the structure of a Hopf algebra in uh, no way motives over Q. Um, uh, and maybe, yeah, I should have said that, well, the example, why do you expect that, uh, why do you expect this to be true? Uh, the point is that the purebred group is, is a fundamental group of the, um, of the, the space of configurations of n points in the complex plane. So you can view this as the beta realization of uh, an algebraic variety, which is defined over Q even over Z. So, so in that sense, well, this is a particular, uh, a particular case of the general question that I have at the top of, of this slide. Uh, it's not quite pi one of uh, X that has uh, the structure of a motif, but it's this half algebra, which is um, sort of the best nilpotent approximation to, to my group. Um, uh, all right. All right, so, so I was, that was it for, that's all I wanted to say about motives. Um, I'm, I'm going back to knots. Uh, so yeah, recall, now we have a more precise uh, idea of what I, I want to do. So recall my main theorem was about giving the space of knots uh, a motivic structure. So I want to say first a few words about manifold calculus, because if you remember in my main theorem, I had this mysterious T infinity uh, thing. Um, so manifold calculus is a theory that was uh, introduced by Guduri and Weiss. Uh, so the idea is we'd like to understand the space of embeddings between uh, two sm from a smooth manifold M to a smooth manifold M. Uh, M has dimension uh, N and N has dimension M. Um, so that's hard in general. That's easy to do when, uh, when the source is a disk. Um, then the homotopy type of the space of embedding is uh, is what I denote uh, f r sub m of the tangent bundle of m. So this is um, uh, this is the bundle of m frames in the tangent bundle of n. So that's um, so that's a fiber bundle over n, whose fiber over a point is the space of uh, uh, linear uh, space of linearly independent uh, family. Uh, families of m vectors in the tangent space at that point. So essentially what, what this is saying is up to homotopy embedding a disk in, in m is just you can just shrink this disk to a very uh, like you can just look locally at the at the origin of the disk and then 
all you all you have left is the data of the the derivative of that embedding, which is um, which is a, a linear map uh, a linear map from from RM into uh, into the tangent the tangent space at that point. Um, and yeah, by picking a basis, you can identify it with that space here. So that's for one disk. Uh, what happens if you have many disks? Uh, so if M is a disjoint union of K disks, then uh, the same reasoning shows that the, the space of embedding will, will be homotopy equivalent to the uh, M frame bundle of the tangent space of the space of configurations of K points in M. So for each disk, you should remember where you, where you send the center of the disk and the data of the, uh, the derivative uh, uh, the embedding at, at the center of the disk. Uh, and that, that, captures, uh, that captures everything up to, up to a contractible choice. Um, okay, so we know what to do for disk or disjoint unit of, of disks. So what we can do in general is try to approximate uh, our space of embeddings by, the, by, the, by such uh, embedding spaces. So we can uh, we can consider the the diagram which which sends to um, uh, an object uh, in it in the poset that I denote disk M. I'm going to explain this in a second. To you, I assign the the space of embeddings of Q into M. So disk M is the poset of uh, um, open subsets of M that are uh, diffeomorphic to a disjoint union of disks. And then I take the whole limit over, over this post set. And uh, any embedding uh, by restriction to, to disks will, will give me, uh, so if I have a point here, I have a point in each of these pieces and they assemble into a point in the homotopy limit. So, so that's the idea of, uh, of manifold calculus. Uh, you try to compute the space of embeddings by uh, studying instead this approximation, which is a complicated whole limit complicated homotopy limit, but of spaces that are uh, well understood. And there is a theorem of Gulli and Klein that uh, says that in some cases, uh, so that the condition is that the co-dimension is at least three, then this map is a weak equivalent. Uh, in, but in general, even if the co-dimension is not three, you can denote uh, the limit, uh, like the right-hand side of, of this map, you can denote it by T infinity. And in fact, you have a tower. So for each k, you can denote by tk of embedding mn, the homotopy limit over the category of disks. So what, what I denote by disk lower than or equal to k is a category of open sets that are diffeomorphic to a disjoint union, union of at most k disks. Um, so yeah, everything, these things organize into, uh, they organize themselves into a tower. So you have a space of embeddings, t infinity, and then you have the tk for each k. So if we do this for knots, um, uh, then there is a there is a, an important theorem which is due to uh, Dwyer, Hess, and Turchin. So maybe first, well, this doesn't quite fit in the framework that I explained in the previous slide because you have this lower c uh, thing, so it's not quite embeddings, but this compactly supported embeddings. But you can adapt uh, the theory of manifold calculus to these. Um, uh, and you can, uh, yeah, the theorem of Dwyer, Hess, and Turchin, so they proved it sort of independently, that you can understand uh, uh, this approximation, this TK of embeddings, uh, in terms of uh, this space here. So omega 2 it means two full loop space. Um, uh, yeah, but uh, EN is my notation for the, for the little n disks operad. Lower than or equal to k means uh, I truncate it up to RT uh, k. So this is the mapping space from the E1 truncated operad to the ED truncated operad. This is a mapping space from the E1 truncated at two operad to the ED truncated at two operad. Then this map, this map here is given by by restriction, and I take the homotopy fiber of that map, and then I, I take the two full loop space. This looks very this looks quite complicated uh, and a bit crazy. Um, in fact, if you think about it, well, I'm not gonna explain the proof of the theorem, it's quite involved. But uh, if you try to unpack what this uh, right-hand side is, you will see that 
Um, well, omega two is some sort of homotopy limit. Ho fiber is also homotopy limit. If you pick a presentation of uh, E1, this mapping space you can view also as a homotopy limit of things. There are going to be configurations of points in RD. So at the end of the day, if you if you unpack what this is, this is a big complicated homotopy limit of things that are configurations of points in RD. And if you recall the previous slide, uh, it's also what the what the TK thing was. It was also some kind of homotopy limit uh, of things that are that were. Uh, configurations of points in the target, and in, our, in this case, the target is RD. So that gives sort of a, a vague uh, idea for why this theorem is true. Um, so this theorem in particular implies a TK of the embedding um, space is a full space. Um, and, Can I ask a silly uh, question? Can I yes. Is, Roughly speaking, when you're mapping the E1, the, the K to the two, or you're just sort of gluing the little intervals in the E1 together along things. Is that the idea? Is that what the two means? You're taking two intervals and then seeing how they glue together? Because you're, you're, you're trying to map a longer and longer piece of the, of the R1. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's sort of, yeah, it's not, it's not quite, uh, it's not quite that. Uh, okay, sorry. It's, it's a bit complicated to explain, sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, so this structure of a two-fold space is compatible with connected sum for knots. So I think I have a picture. Yeah, here's what, how connected sum works. So if you have a long knot in RD and another long knot in RD, well, we can glue them together to get a, a, a third uh, knot in RD. And that's, uh, that gives uh, the space of embedding the structure of, uh, of the loop space, in fact. Um, it's not it's not clear that it's a, that it's a two full loop space, but at least it's a it's a loop space, and and recall that the the embedding space maps to each of the TK of the embedding space, and the two the two the two loop space structures are are compatible. Um, okay, and so this uh, this Goodwill device uh, this Goodwill device tower. Uh, so this manifold calculus tower is related to the theory of finite type invariant uh, for knots. So let me let me explain uh, quickly what this is. So this is a definition that, that was due to Vasiliev and Gusarov. Um, so uh, what is uh, so definition is uh, what is a, uh, an additive invariant of degree uh, at most k uh, for knots? So it will be a map from the set of knots by zero of the space of embeddings to an abelian group A, which is a monoid homomorphism. So this has a monoid structure given by connected sum, and which is invariant under infection by pure braids lying in the K plus one term in the lower central series of the pure braid group. So that's, that's how the, this lower central series that appeared in the, in the theory of motives here also appears in the, in the theory of knots. Uh, so what do I mean by infection by a pure bread? Here's a picture. So here's a, here's a knot. Uh, and inside this knot, well, inside this box, uh, so it's like a three ball in my, uh, in my R3. Uh, and the intersection of, the, of my knot with this three ball is uh, a trivial braid with three strands. And I can, uh, now I can uh, pick any other uh, pure braid with three strands. And replace what's in that box by my uh, by my pure braid, and that this gives me a different knot. So that's what I call infection infection of a knot by a, by a pure braid. Um, and so uh, yeah, an invariant of degree at most k uh, will not see the difference between uh, this knot and this knot if the braid that you used uh, uh, is in this term as a lower central series. So the higher k is, the more the finer the invariant is. Um, and there's a conjecture, uh, which is in, uh, I think in this precise form, is a first appeared in a paper by Bonnie, Conant, Kochev, and Sinha. Um, the conjecture is that the map from pi zero of the embedding space to the K plus first term, the Google device tower, uh, is the universal additive invariant of degree uh, at most K. So universal means it's the initial object in the category of uh, additive invariants. Any other additive invariant will factor through this one. Um, 
So what's known about this conjecture is that it's true after transferring with Q, uh, and that's essentially due to Konsevich. It's a, it's a construction called Konsevich integral. Um, and uh, uh, Danica Kosanovich in her thesis has shown that it's um, uh, that this map is surjective, which means um, this implies that maybe it's not the universal additive invariant, but at least it's a it's a quotient of the universal additive invariant of degree at most k. Uh, Okay, so now I can get a precise uh, precise formulation of my uh, the main theorem I had at the beginning. So now I had this. Um, so D is projection uh, equal to three. K is any integer uh, at least uh, K is at least two, and it could be infinity. Um, and I can look at this homotopy fiber. So this mapping space of truncated operat to this. So recall uh, from the previous slide, if I take a two full loops on this. This gives me the case term in the goodwill Weiss tower uh, that uh, approximates the space of knots. Um, so, uh, yeah, so that's that's a twofold de-looping of, uh, of the case case uh, stage of the tower. Um, so that's actually a simply connected space. Uh, and the theorem is that this has a the structure of a non-trivial motivic commutative type. So now, since it's simply connected, I don't have to worry about um, uh, pi one. So this is really the, the definition I've given at the beginning. Um, so in particular, the homotopy groups uh, of, of this uh, Goodwill device approximation, not just pi zero, but all homotopy groups. Uh, are going to have a structure, the structure of a Noe motive, uh, and and when d is at least four, then we have this goodwill klein uh, convergent theorem that says that the, the limit of the goodwill device tower actually computes a space of embeddings. So then we have a statement uh, about the actual homotopy groups of the of the embedding space. Uh, so yeah, the important word in the theorem is the word non-trivial because you could there is. You, you can always give a sort of stupid motivic structure to uh, to any homotopy type uh, where, well, essentially, uh, yeah, essentially a motivic homotopy type you can think of as uh, a homotopy type with an action of some complicated group, and you can you can give a trivial trivial action. So here, what's important is that it's, it's non-trivial, and we can actually deduce stuff from from its non-triviality. Um, yeah, this space is connected, uh, as I said. Uh, I can give a very quick sketch of proof. So we, we can start with, uh, uh, so the input we need is the structure of a motivic homotopy type on the operator E2. So here we have to actually use non simply connected spaces because it's operator E2, uh, the spaces that, that appear in this operator E2 are not simply connected. So we have to do a detour through non simply connected uh, spaces, even though the, the, the statement of the theorem is is a purely uh, simply connected theorem. Um, and th then we use a result due to Jacob Dury called additivity for the little uh, D disks operand. So you can write the little D disks operand as E2 tensor E D minus two. Uh, and what you do is, well, you give E D minus two the stupid motivic structure. Um, and you give E2 its, uh, its uh, non-trivial one. So I'm going to explain in a second where it comes from. Um, uh, and the point is that, yeah, the, the map, um, yeah, well, if you pick a map from E1 to ED, that will sort of factor uh, through the, the ED minus two part, the one that is, that is trivial. Um, uh, this will be a, uh, well, this space will have a, a motivic homotopy type structure, and this this will preserve the base point uh, and here as well. Uh, so these two spaces will be uh, pointed uh, motivic homotopy types, and then the homotopy fiber will will have will inherit, will inherit a, a pointed motivic homotopy type structure. Okay, so the only thing I have to explain is where does the motivic homotopy type structure in E two comes from. Uh, but I realize I only have five minutes left. 
So maybe let me explain this very quickly. Um, uh, so essentially, as you as always, uh, there is a rational part and a and a pro p a p complete part for each prime. So rational part actually it comes from the fact that the rationalized little Tedesco prime has, has an action as a Groton, a group called the Grotendieck Teichmuller group, and this Grotendieck Teichmuller group receives a map from uh, Ayub's motivic Galois group. So to the rationalized little Tedesco prime has an action of uh, uh, of uh, Ayub's motivic Galois group, and that's how you can you can uh, you can do the, the rational rational part of this uh, this story. Uh, the p complete part is uh, similarly there is a there is a p uh, a pro p Grotendieck Teichmuller group, and the p complete little to this operand has an action at this uh, this pro p Grotendieck Teichmuller group. Uh, so these two results are essentially due to Greenfield, and they were put in. And so in the homotypical context, in the rational uh, situation, is due to Fress, and in the p-complete case, uh, it was a paper that I wrote. Um, so we have this section uh, of the pro p Grotendieck teschmer group and the and the p-completed little two disk operand. And there is a map of profinite group from the absolute Galois group of Q to this P completed uh, Grotendieck Teschmuller group to this P pro P Grotendieck Teschmuller group. So that's how you, you construct the Galois action. And these two pieces of data are compatible. And that's what gives a motivic homotopy, the structure of a motivic homotopy type when you two. Uh, there is a second approach that is uh, that uh, comes from recent work of uh, Dimitri Weintraub. Uh, he actually has a, an algebraic geometric model for the little to this operator uh, using using log schemes. Uh, I'm not going to explain this. Um, okay, uh, so we have this motivic homotopy, motiv the structure of a motivic homotopy type and um, and the space of knots, or maybe on on, on this good device approximation in the case of knots in R three. So what can we use this for? Um, so one one theorem we can deduce from this uh, is it's a partial uh, answer to this conjecture. Uh, so recall there was this conjecture that I mentioned that um, uh, that the Goodall device tower uh, pr uh, produces a universal additive invariant uh, uh, for knots, and so it's joint work with uh, with Pedro Boavida. We can prove that this is true. So the map to the k plus first stage of the Goodall device tower is a universal additive invariant of degree at most k after inverting prime numbers. Uh, if you invert small prime numbers, uh, sorry, this n here should be k. If you invert small prime numbers with respect to k, um, uh, this is true. So the larger k is the more prime numbers you have to invert. Um, uh, so that's a yeah, that's a theorem that we prove uh, uh, using this this motivic structure. So actually, the idea is um, this Goodwill device tower. Um, so we have this Goodwill device tower that computes uh, that computes uh, uh, the homotopy type of the space of knots, uh, and this this tower uh, induces a spectral sequence. Uh, that tries to compute the homotopy groups of this, uh, the limit of the, the tower. Um, um, and using the, the point is since um, now this tower has this extra data of uh, it's, it's a motivic homotopy type, the, the spectral sequence has, 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 some, um, has some more uh, algebraic data. But the differentials, it puts a lot of restrictions on the differentials in the spectral sequence because they have to be compatible with this, with this data. And this forces many differentials to be to be zero, um, and then we use uh, we actually use uh, the work in in Denisa Denis uh, thesis, uh, where she she proves that uh, uh, if you know that this Goodwill device spectral sequence collapses, uh, this implies that the, that the uh, that this implies a, a positive uh, answer to this conjecture. So the fact that uh, 
the K, K plus first state of the West Tower is the universal right field invariant of degree at most K. Uh, and I think I'm out of time. So maybe I'll just say, yeah, you can also compute higher homotopy groups uh, in a range uh, in a range of degree using this kind of uh, data. And that's it. Thank you. Okay, many thanks indeed. Any questions or comments? Yes, so I have a question. So uh, uh, is it possible that, that, that you could uh, still lift this um, motivic homotopy type to uh, 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 a homotopy type in say, and I don't know, SH of K or something like that, or is it completely out of? Uh... I think SH is fine. Um, what's not, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I think, I mean, I think that no one has really written the details of this, but everything I've explained with uh, GA, uh, you could do is uh, SH instead. But uh, you, you really want these two gluing parts, uh, some some periodic thing and some, uh, yeah. that's it? I, I mean, in some sense, uh, this is not a very good definition. Uh, it looks a bit ad hoc. Um, yeah, but okay. Uh, yeah, so actually the idea of motivic homotopy type is try to cap capture as much as possible uh, from like as much unstable data as possible from from stable uh, information. So that's that's um, yeah, that's that's the idea of of, uh, of these motivic homotopy types. So okay, uh, and the Galois action is is really used, for example, for the, this vanishing of differentials that you yeah. mentioned. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. In fact, you, you don't you don't need the full. Um, really, it, it, this theorem is just a theorem about the p complete part of, of this data. So it's yeah. just a theorem about the Galois action. I mean, that's how we wrote it in our in our paper. But uh, I think it's cool to have a full. Yeah, yeah, sure. Structure. Other questions. It seems that we don't have uh, any other questions. And let's thank Geoffroy again. Thank you very much.